What do you think of when you think of aging? I think of my grandma. My grandma was 70 years old when I was born and starting to show signs of Alzheimer's. My grandfather had died earlier that year, and my mom was concerned that I wouldn't have the relationship with either of her parents that she had had with her own grandparents. And you know what? She was right. My grandmother was able to take care of her nine grandchildren for a few years after I was born. But it wasn't long before things shifted and we started to care for her. She moved across the street from us and my mom coordinated around the clock care for her during the week. But as I got older on the weekends, mostly I stayed with her. On good days, she would teach me about her political views or we'd watch basketball or she might even speculate about when we would have a woman as president. She'd tell me about her childhood and her time living in Chicago and working in radio long before women played a role in broadcasting. But on bad days, she didn't always know what I was doing there, or sometimes she'd have panic attacks about her weekday caregiver having too many magazines. At the end of the day, though, whether it was good or bad, she was one of my best friends. One afternoon, she fell in her yard and broke her wrist. And before I knew it, I started to see significant decline in her health and well-being. It wasn't a big fall, and even after she physically recovered, she never fully regained her health and cognition. Shortly thereafter, she got a urinary tract infection, and there was another decline. And then the fall started happening more often, and she was getting sicker and sicker. And with each fall or with each common cold or illness, we saw another sharp decline, and she never recovered from them. She was getting depressed and frustrated, and even though her care was still pretty expensive, we weren't able to provide her with what she needed. So it was time to put her in a nursing home. After a fall in her first facility, she was moved to a higher level of care. And those of you that have experienced will know that this care is incredibly expensive, and insurance doesn't always cover enough of it. So my mom and her brothers decided it was time to start selling off portions of our family farm that had been around for generations. Even in that higher level of care, she still continued to fall and to get sick. And with each fall and with each illness, we continued to see cognitive and intellectual decline. She was angry and she was withdrawn. And it started to become clear to all of us that we were about to lose that spitfire matriarch of our family. Then she slid out of her wheelchair. And the decline that came with that fall was so significant that my mom wouldn't let me visit her any longer. She knew my grandmother would want to be remembered for how she was in her first two acts of life and in the stories that she told me, not as the woman who in her third act, in that final push, had forgotten how to speak, who couldn't feed herself and had lost control of her bladder, and who lived in constant pain, whether it be physical or emotional. My grandmother lived like that for two years years. Then in 2008, nearly 15 years after she'd fallen in her yard, my grandmother died. See, my grandmother was incredibly special to me, but what I know is that her story is not unique. This is what aging looks like today. Now, I would say there's a chance if you've pictured aging at all, you've maybe considered that you or your parents could live forever. Or perhaps you've seen yourself growing old and retiring and getting to go on a lot of vacations. At least that's the part of aging I want to think about. But the truth is that mostly we try not to think about it at all. We have continually rationalized and ignored the way the aging process takes hold because we believe that it is to be expected that aging and dying are painful. We've come to accept the status quo because we think it's the best it can, we can do. I'm here to tell you today that this is not the case. The changing of the guards is already happening in terms of numbers. On average, 10,000 baby boomers retire every day. The U.S. Census projects that in 2015, 54 million Americans were over the age of 65. 
but by 2050, that number is expected to nearly double to 107 million. If ever there's a time for us to change the way we age, it is now. Those baby boomers I spoke of have seen massive technological innovation in their lives. Their children, myself included, have helped reset expectation for how we learn, what our work-life balance looks like, how we receive presentations. But yet, we have not reset our expectations for how we age and die, along with those surrounding how we live. Now is the time to stand up, demand change, and use technology to bring it about. So how exactly do we age? Experts in aging have described my grandmother's process of aging as a life curve. Essentially, this shows that when we are born and when we are young, our health and quality of life are high, and then over time and as we age, it declines. Makes sense. Experts at the University of Missouri and others have started to describe a relationship between time and functional ability that while still can make a curve, ultimately looks more like stairs, where we're continuing on at a certain level of functional ability until a triggering incident happens, at which time we see a sharp decline, and then we continue on at that new level until another triggering incident and another decline. And this continues on and on and on until we die. Essentially what I am suggesting today, as many others have, is that it might be possible to square the life curve. Basically, as we transition from a society that's looking to deliver health care to a society that's looking to improve health, what our medical providers and policymakers have been trying to do is square the life curve or widen the stairs and shorten the declines. I believe that it is possible to do this. Basically, what this would mean is that if my grandmother had not fallen in her yard, or she didn't fall as often, or in the ways that she did, or if we could have prevented some of those common illnesses, her decline would not have been as severe. Now, don't get me wrong, she still had Alzheimer's. And the woman did live until she was 93 years old. But what I question is the severe decline in her quality of life. What I am suggesting is that it may have been possible to improve her quality of life in those last 15 years by predicting when some of her incidents may have happened and preventing them from occurring as often as possible. What I'm speaking to here is the widely held idea in public health that we should be addressing all aspects of life related to health before decline as opposed to simply treating symptoms after they've occurred. This is a trend that has already taken place in acute care. In healthcare, preventative medicine is the key. Policymakers are including this in all of our new legislation. This preventative model of care not only improves health and quality of life, but it is also less expensive for the individual and for the insurance company and for the country and world as a whole. Imagine for just a second if we could square that, if that life curve, what that would mean for you and your parents and for us as a society. It would mean that we could age in our own homes longer. It would mean that we could work or drive longer. It might allow for more opportunities for travel. It might allow more grandchildren to know their grandparents in their first two acts of life it would definitely make aging less painful. It would preserve dignity among the elderly. And it might even possibly mean that families do not literally have to sell the farm to pay for care. So how do we square the life curve? If I'm being honest with you, this is something that senior living providers have been trying to work on for decades. They do a number of initiatives to help with this, including conducting regular fall assessments. They pay attention to illnesses and try to prevent their occurrence and spread. They collect data and they chart declines and many, many other things. But the truth is what we know is that it's not enough. It's not even close. Technology, though, is already filling in several pieces to this puzzle, and we're really just scratching the surface. 
For example, as part of an NIH study, a passive health monitoring system developed by the University of Missouri was installed in apartments in a senior living facility. This is a truly amazing technology. Staff does not have to be added. Residents don't have to wear a call button or pull a cord when they fall. What happens is there are sensors placed in their apartments that track the residents passively without touching them. And then the monitoring system that's powered by artificial intelligence is able to alert a care provider to a change in their environment or their behavior. That may mean an incident is about to happen. In doing this, we can prevent these incidents from happening. We can spread out the time between them when they do occur and ultimately reduce their long-term impact or widen the stairs and shorten the decline. This is just one of many examples of the way in which technology can help us prevent these incidents from happening and ultimately improve quality of life. Other examples include telehealth, communications portals, electronic medical records, and many, many more. And again, we're just starting to realize what solutions could help seniors. But first and foremost, all of us have to stand up and say that the status quo is no longer acceptable. We must demand change and improvement. We have to reset and redefine our expectations for what aging will look like. We have to insist on a better end of life for our parents than our grandparents have. What do you want the end of your life to look like? How would you like to see your parents age? How much physical, emotional, and financial stress do you want to cause your children? I think we can all agree that we shouldn't have to sell the farm to preserve dignity. Thank you.